Hey guys, in this effect house tutorial, I want to show you how you can create a funny pizza face filter like this for TikTok. We will use a free 3D object from the Sketchfab library, but of course you can use any other 3D object you want to create a filter like this. So let's start. Hey again, so let's create this funny pizza face here in effect house. We will get the 3D element we need for this filter from the asset library, which is built in here in Effect House. So for this, we go to our assets panel and here we can find a button with asset library on it. Just click on it and then the asset library will open up. And here we have a lot of different assets we can choose from, but we are interested in the last one, the Sketchfab library. Here we have access to yeah, the Sketchfab library, which is a library of free 3D objects. And here we will search for pizza slice. And then, yeah, it will give us all the options we have for, yeah, pizza 3D objects. And I will go with this, a slice of pizza um, 3D object here. And when we click on it, we see a preview and here we can click on import. It may be when you click on import that you have to log in into a Sketchfab account and yeah, just do this and then you can download this to your Effect House project. So the next thing is that we set up our scene. For this, we go to the left hand side and click on add object. We want the pizza slice to follow along our heads. So we have to create a face tracker for this. So we go to AR tracking and here we select the head tracker. When we yeah, create a face tracker, we have this face binding object with a head um, 3D collider in it. So we can't see this head collider, but I will show you now what this head collider is doing. So now we will import our pizza slice, our 3D object into our scene. For this, we search for this um, yeah, object in our asset library which has a gray cube icon and then just drag and drop it into the face binding and make sure it is upon the head object. Now we can't see the pizza slice here in our scene because it is invisible because of this head collider. When we select the pizza here in our scene and then we have those arrows and when we grab the blue arrow and drag it, drag it in front of the face, we can see that now the pizza is visible. And yeah, now the pizza isn't in the position we want it to because we have to rotate it and make it a little bit bigger so it covers the whole face. For this, we select our pizza object on the left hand side and go to the right hand side. And here, the first thing I will do is to change the rotation. I will change the rotation of set to 90. That was the wrong one, <laughs> maybe X. Yes, this was the right one. So now it is facing towards the camera. Then I go down to scale and here I activate this chain icon. And now I will set the scale of this pizza to let's say three. Now it is covering my whole face. The pizza at the moment is a little bit glossy and doesn't look that real, but we will change this later. And um, now I will change the position of the pizza. You can do this here in the middle in the scene, or you can also type in um, yeah, some values on the right hand side in the transform. And yeah, I will just change it here with the scene, but yeah, you can also type in now, um, for example, set free for the position. Um, yeah, I will leave it like this. We see now that our nose is still showing up in the middle of the pizza, but we can change this. So we go to the left hand side and as I've already said, this head occluder is causing this and we can just yeah, turn this head occluder off. And now the nose isn't visible anymore. I just turn it on and off to position it the pizza better. So the next step is that we want to have our mouth and our eyes in front of the pizza. For this, we go again to add object. This time we go to face effects and then we can find this face inset. When we click on it, we see that Effect House has created this mouth in the middle of 
the pizza. And now we can just go to the to the scene in the middle and then just drag this mouth around and position it on the pizza. We can do this of course also on the right hand side with the position values and here we can also scale or rotate our mouth. So yeah, just play around here until you find the right position. Now I go again to add object and create another face inset object. Now again the mouth is visible but we want to change this to an eye. So for this we select the face inset we have just created, the face inset 1. I will rename this to left eye so I don't get confused. And then I go to the right hand side when the left eye is selected and here under face inset we can change the face area. This is currently set to mouth but I want to have the left eye. When I do this the left eye is visible and I can also change now the position, the rotation and the scale of this eye. And now I will do this a third time to create the right eye. So again go to add object, face effects, face inset, then rename it to right eye, then go to the right hand side and set the face area to right eye. Of course you can also set it to the eyebrows, the whole face or just the nose. But for this I will go with the right eye. Then I also reposition it, scale it a little bit so it looks funny and now we have this pizza face effect. Now you can just play around with all the different positions and scales. I will set the scale of my pizza for example a little bit bigger so it really covers the whole face. And now I also want to show you how you can get rid of this glossy look of the pizza. For this we go to our asset panel and here under a slice of pizza we can find our materials. And here we have this pizza material. When we scroll down here on the right hand side in our inspector we can find this MRAO and here we can change the roughness of the material or we can here just um, disable the material, the MRO material and when we now set the roughness to 100 the glass is gone. When we activate it, it is back a little. Yeah, so just play around. And of course you can do this with any other 3D object you import to the to effectors. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. If yes, give this video a thumbs up and if you're new on this channel, it would be nice when you subscribe to it so you won't miss any of my upcoming videos. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye!